is like just about nine. We're gonna, my dad's having a shower. I just washed up and uh, we're gonna head down for breakfast really shortly. I'm not gonna put on makeup today. My eyes have been watering like crazy, just like a faucet for the last few days. And they're really kind of like, saw, <laughs> sorry, raw and sore. So I'm just gonna have a makeup free day today, which will be good. I think it'll do me good. Keep rubbing them. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really good. Today we're doing a couple of events. Marion wanted me to come with her to do like a court dancing class. So I think that'll be fun. And with Derek, I'm doing a game called Meeple Party. I'm gonna try that out. I heard cute things about it. It's like a co-op party game or something. So why not try it? And then Derek's got a LARP and an RPG today. So he's gonna be tied up with that for like seven hours. And they're, that's like seven hours straight, like four hours RPG, three hour LARP. And then right before that is when we have Meeple Party and, and the other event. So he's like got events for like 10 hours straight or something. It's kind of crazy. Um, we'll see if he actually gets around to doing all of that. Um, so I feel pretty good. I know at Gen Con, usually like around Friday, I have a little bit of a, like a sad day. I, I, I kind of get a little down and sad and I need time to myself for a little bit. And I'm like, I just need to go to a quiet room. I need to stay in my, stay in my room for half the day and decompress or something like that. And that hasn't happened here at Origins. And I think the reason is <clears throat> that this con is less overloading in general. Um, I'm still, Gen Con is still my favorite convention. That's just my home. That's where I'm going to feel happier and be more excited for everything. But there's a few things to note here, right? There's a sense of scale at Origins here where I feel like I know where everything is. I know what's happening in what spaces. There's only so many events. There's only so many vendors. There's only so many things happening. And I have a pretty good grasp on what's where and what's what and what's happening when. Uh, you don't quite get the sensory overload here as much. Um, the convention center doesn't fill out. There's not that pressure for Origins to constantly fill space all the time um, down to the last details. So. There's a lot more open spaces. There's a lot more, um, you know, there's a lot more people sitting around and uh, just using spaces for their own purposes to do their own thing. Whereas at Gen Con, they have to kind of control the space and the schedule really tightly just to make sure that everything fits in. Um, so yeah, I just don't think I get that here. So this is, uh, the, this is the prototype of the new version of Fiasco that we're producing. Uh -huh. It's going to come with uh, uh, it's, it's the rules, which will be in a very small uh, board game-like uh, set of instructions with yeah. examples. <laughs> and it's going to have a, a, a play mat, yeah. okay. which uh, not only guides you through what you need to do to play, but it gives you places to put everything, and it also has a let's not spot, which is good, uh, sort of like an X card, that, you know, a place to uh, to make sure that... So you just basically just tap your hand as opposed to put a card there? Yeah. Okay. Let's not do that. Yeah. I'm thinking a little bit more about safety after 10 years of lessons learned. So in the box, uh, there will be a, a, a cool insert and then some decks of cards. So the new... the the primary innovation of the new version of the game is that uh, everything is card-based rather than using dice, index cards, and sharpies. Uh, everything you need will be uh, included in the box. So that means it looks like the different playsets now become different decks of cards? That's right. So instead of using dice uh, to randomize uh, the setup, you uh, use cards. And also positive and negative outcomes have their own cards. And the aftermath is now, it's all, essentially the aftermath table becomes a deck of cards. 
So let's pick a, a place that. How about Main Street? Sure. It's one that's in the book. Uh, it'll almost certainly be in the in the game. And what you get with a with a de uh, playset, a deck now is. Uh, so you, you get a card that has the score on it. It tells you what it's about. On the back of that, it's got some kickers that'll uh, maybe inspire you if you're not sure how to begin the game. Just situations that uh, that, that would begin a, begin a game. momentum going. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the setup is done with cards. So just like in the regular game, you have relationships, um, locations, uh, relationships, locations, objects, and somewhere in here we'll have some needs too. So uh, uh, just like in the regular game, every, every two players are going to share a relationship. In this case, we've got romance, lifelong crush, and object of crush. And that'll go, let's say that goes between the two of you. And you're going to have a need. Let's say, let's pretend. Pure speculation. <laughs> and then there's a, uh, you have a need attached to that to get even with the bad people who think they're so tough. Nothing bad will come from this, right? It's not going to be a fiasco. Uh, and then similarly, we'll have relationships with an object, relationship with a location. Uh, it'll all get set up just just the same way you do in the in the pencil and paper version of the game. The advantage of this is it's much faster. It goes much quicker. The possibility space is small. It sounds like you uh, won't end up with duplicates. There will be no duplicates. Uh, it's not not possible unless you have two two sets of the playset. Two other things that I'm really excited about seeing in, in play that cards allow you to do are uh, tuning the deck for content. So if you, uh, for example, if you're going to play with your kids but you don't want to include any of the drug references for whatever reason, you can just edit out cards that suggest so drugs. does that mean that like, so there's definitely enough cards in each set to allow you to remove a couple and still have it totally fine? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, and the, the, there's an algorithm to, to the uh, number of relationship need, object and location cards, but the, 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 the fewest cards, I'm getting into the weeds here, but, uh, well, I'm curious. Design-wise, yes, it's absolutely true. You can take a, several cards out of any playset without any any um, any impact on play. Uh, the other cool thing uh, is that, uh, in my opinion, is that you can uh, you can combine playsets. If there's cards you particularly like, you could have the Country Mall by combining Main Street and Poppleton Mall, right? And I think that that's going to lead to some really fun, innovative uh, ways to play. So uh, we we spread out all our uh, our our. Uh, our uh, cards for the setup. We're gonna have a lot of cards left over, and the nice thing about that is that on the back of these cards are names. So we can uh, it, we can of course create our own character names if we want. But if you don't want to, you That's can great. put these together, and yeah. now you're Jennifer That's Gonzalez, right? That's pretty great. Uh, really, we're designing this <laughs> designing this to be very fast, intuitive, to to, to uh, front load all the work. Uh, other than the creativity of telling telling it's story really together. Must open the box and start playing straight away. That's without, exactly yeah. the plan. So now you're Jennifer Gonzalez. We know what your relationship is. We're ready to go. Uh, as you play, um, you're, you're still creating little scenes. You're still having uh, establishment or resolution. You're establishing and resolving scenes. Um, and then uh, you're going to be accruing positive and negative outcomes to those scenes, just like the game that you're familiar with. Uh, so is there a... Well, you're, you're, you're getting ahead of me, right. Derek. So let's say at the end of uh, end of Act One, you've accrued a two positive and one negative card. Yep. At the end of Act One, it's time to figure out a tilt. We flip them over, and it's, it gives you a sort of a numeric okay. score to, to decide who decides the tilt elements, and then each one has a tilt element on it for you to choose from. Okay. So at the at the middle of the game, again, all this stuff is going to be put out there for you. You're going to choose, of course you're going to choose Mayhem, Magnificent, Self-Destruction, <laughs> and that becomes part of Act 2. It's going to be uh -huh. part of the game. So, uh, uh, and then you, you continue to play uh, using the, the rules we're all familiar with. The aftermath happens just the way it would in the regular game, uh, and that's uh, that's what's changed. Um, Go I for can, it. I can, I can. No, you're fine. All right. Uh, or the Queen is a collaborative storytelling card game. Uh, we are all on a dangerous journey with a queen who we love very much. Um, that's all that we know about her, though. Uh, the way that we're going to find out more is we're going to be answering questions on these prompt cards, like, there's a false rumor about you and the queen back to the court. What is it, and how did it start? Okay. And so by answering these questions, we're going to find out what our relationship with the queen is and with each other, how we feel about her, and um, 
who she is as a person. Because in the beginning, we, we have this amorphous idea, but we define it over time. Sure. Um, and we have several illustrations, some beautiful queen art that we've made. Okay. Um, but these are just uh, ideas for inspiration. You could certainly you could play a space queen, you could play a cyber queen. Um, I had a fantastic time one time saying, yep, the queen gets in her war rig, t says let's ride, and I was like, we're playing Mad Max Furiosa Queen. That's what we're doing. And um, so any, any, any journey that you can imagine uh, is a great one. Um, the game ends when we get to the card that says the queen is under attack, do you defend her? And then we all have to decide for ourselves if that's something we want to do. Uh, we started being very loving her and being loyal to her, but through play we find out whether that's changed and whether we think she's still the good person that we thought she was at the beginning. Um, it plays two to six players, and uh, the game length depends on where you put this card. Okay. So if you put it, say, in the middle of the deck, it usually is about half an hour. If you put it towards the bottom, it runs between an hour and two. Um, because you find as you go deeper and deeper, people ask more and more follow-up questions, and each thing that becomes more and more fraught, and more um, the, the queen becomes more and more dynamic as you go. Um, so I, it doesn't have a GM. There's no GM, and there's really not even a facilitator either. Hi. There you go. Hi. What's your name, sir? Weldon. This is Weldon, and he watches my YouTube channel. I do all the <laughs> time. He just came to say hi, and I, I I really like that. I really appreciate that you said hi. I was walking by, and I'm like, I know her. I know who that is. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. Okay. What is the best thing you've done at Origins so far? Uh, meeting you. Oh no! No, <laughs> yes. you're so sweet. True. Uh, okay. Well, True. in that case, what are you looking forward to before it ends? Because we have like a day, about 24 hours of Origins. Left. Just seeing all of the new games. Actually, there's so yeah. many new games coming out at Origins. So is there a particular one you're like, okay, before I go, this is the one thing I really must check out? Uh, yeah, the vinyl game. I forgot it's exactly what it's called. Yeah, it's like about records. Yeah, you like you have to collect oh. records. I guess it was on Kickstarter. I didn't know anything about it on Kickstarter. You have to check that out. I'm gonna. I'm interested to All see right, that. Right. I tried to find them in there, but I couldn't find them, so I got to look at the book again. Very cool. And well, then you're going to Gen Con. Yes. Is there anything that you, at this point you're looking forward to, or just generic? Like I'm just really excited. Gen Con's amazing, so just looking forward to Gen Con. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for saying hi. Yep. Bye. Bye. So now you're up. So you're so the first two things you're gonna do, you're gonna draw a new guest from the bag, all right, and put them in any row, okay, and then they will do their action. So these three will attract people into the room with them, and these will these two will knock people out of the room. A wallflower is going to push someone one room away. And now the second step is gonna be you move any one meeple on the board. Oh well. But we are now we are now at seven. All right. Um, so then we just check that your disaster is avoided. Yep, we're good. Okay. And do uh, you have any photos? Correct. So your turn. We played a meeple party from Ninth Hole Games. What do you think? It was very cute. The cards were pretty cute. Like it's, it's basically your, your, it's a cooperative game where you're trying to manage a party with all these different colored meeples that are different archetypes of people like the wallflower or the jerk or the cool person or the party animal or the flirt and you're moving them around your apartment or your house trying to like keep the party going and uh, fulfill these like iconic photo scenes of like cool stuff that's happening at your party while avoiding these disasters that will stress out your guests and kind of cancel the party early. Um, and it was very cute. I mean, the art is very... It's kind of like, imagine if different colored Gumbies were all trying to have a party together. Uh, and, you know, we had a funny stories about how we were just stacking all of our wallflowers in the bathroom to store them because they didn't know we wanted to hang out with them. Oh, 
I talked to you guys, told you guys that um, Origins, I was kind of surprised that by this time at Gen Con, actually by yesterday of Gen Con, because today is Saturday, I would have been burnt out already and I'd be crying and sad and it's just, it's just, it's Saturday now, but it is starting to hit me a little bit. I, um, I've done two events today and one meeting and I'm starting to really 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 look for excuses to not do things um, my last event ended a couple of hours ago couldn't find anybody to hang out with so I was like I'll just go back to the hotel room for a nap and my friends want to get dinner and I was like uh, I just I want to I want to sleep I don't want to do it and I'm really cranky today too and I'm just grumpy and irritable and frustrating and frustrated but I promised myself for this convention that for the most part I would say yes to almost anything and I would just do all the things so that I could have more interesting footage mainly. So what I'm saying is that I'm pushing myself. I would not do this at Gen Con. I have to take much better care of myself at Gen Con. on the known world's calendar. Holiest day. Oh yeah, holiest day. But, it, but really, you should keep the spirit of Lux Splendor in your heart. I'm just kind of chilling in the convention center. It's 8 p.m., so the exhibitor hall is closed and the event halls are still open, but there's lots of seating and there's not a ton of people. I think I might go check out what the boardroom area looks like. And then, in theory, Marion and Co. are planning a game of quiet ear tonight and i would love to play in that i haven't played it yet i've been very excited about it for a long time uh, so in theory i will be playing that shortly this evening and then i've got to edit this video and we've got to pack our bags tomorrow is sunday the last day of origins and um, i don't know when the hall closes like new 1 2 p.m something like that is when the show starts shutting down tomorrow 
our flight back to Seattle, I think, is eight, at 8 p.m. So, got to pack our bags tonight, make sure everything's ready to go. We've got late checkout at 1 p.m. And it's probably better that we do it all tonight and get ready for that earlier rather than later. And that's about it. It's been a fairly, it's, in theory, it's been a fairly relaxing and chill day at Origins. But in my brain, <laughs> it has been a long show and I'm tired and exhausted. And it's been hard to track down some friends to do things with. You know, I was talking about this with friends. The show has a really good number of people at it. But I feel like the space they have is so huge and vast and everything's really spread out and they don't really fill it. So I kind of feel like they have a really nice number of people. You never really feel completely overwhelmed. But they could tighten it up a little maybe. And it's too long. Five days for a show like this is... Like it starts on Wednesday, you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's a little much for a show of the size. I'm kind of exhausted. I think three days would be a wonderful number for a show like this. But regardless, I had a wonderful time and uh, I will continue to have a wonderful time. And uh, that is all I gotta say for now. <laughs> yep. Grow lizard babies and eat them. She's already doing the lizard eggs. Um. <sighs> Maybe you well, can then. circumvent the lizard eggs and actually put real seeds. What did you do? <laughs> he wasn't even in our quiet year game. What did you do? Nothing. You were all just very tired and easily susceptible to suggestion. I, I would actually like to hear your version of the recap of what the hell happened here. Well, what? I stepped into a game, a game of the quiet year where you guys kept playing around what, with, turn with, me? with uh, nuclear power. And one of the players really didn't want that. So introduced lizard people who Dude. came from a crack in the ground uh, protesting the nuclear power. And, uh, and then things went downhill from there. So I think, I don't remember the actual chain of events, but I think the high points were all of the elderly people were cursed with life and unable to die and desperate only they were just really old for the sweet release sick. of death. They took over, uh, attempted to enslave the lizard people, uh, eventually were killed, and then the lizard people's eggs were planted on the ground and harvested uh, to be eaten. And there were some radioactive crabs that came and ate the trees. And then there was a crab war against the lizard people and you sided with the lizard people. Uh, and then uh, I think you guys realized maybe you're a little too tired to keep playing. How was both your RPG and your LARP RPG? The RPG was very strange. It was on, uh, uh, over the edge, which is very strange. Why? What is it? Uh, it's just kind of... 30 second summary? Uh, every conspiracy theory is real and in uh, a weird island in the Mediterranean. Sure, maybe. Um, and uh, I played Sasquatch, the sad, lonely ghost hunter. I was, I was the Sasquatch, like the Sasquatch, whose name was Trevor. Sasquatch. No, his yeah, he's he's Sasquatch, and his real name was Trevor, um, and he was a ghost hunter because uh, ghosts can't run away, and he wants a friend who can talk to him. Is this a serious or silly game? Unclear. Okay. Uh, and it was a very weird game with some very weird people. Okay. And then I went to a LARP uh, where 
Uh, I convinced everybody that I was an extremely pious priest who was showing them the proper way to salvation. And I was just a con man who wanted to eat nice food. Uh, and I managed to escape before all the nobles killed each other. And then I showed up at your game. Yeah, and ruined everything. Uh, I don't know. I, I would not characterize it. And now that. we have to pack. We've got a lot of packing to do. It is uh, too late o'clock. What time is it? Oh, it's like quarter one. Yep, we have to pack everything, and I've got to edit this entire video. So Derek's going to pack. I'll edit the video. It'll be fun. Right? Sure. Cool. Bye. Bye-bye. Before we finish up, have a look at all of the things that Derek and I picked up while we were here at Origins. We picked up um, a game called The Cursed Court. You saw me demo that, me and Derek demo that um, a few days ago. And with it, we got a free copy of Witches of the Revolution, which is apparently a cooperative, what kind of game? Cooperative deck builder, but we haven't tried it. We know nothing about it, but we got that for free. I picked up Fire Tower because I demoed that on one of the first days that we were here, and I really, really liked it. Um, Derek picked up the Shadowrun Sixth World Beginner Box. Um, was it first available here? Because yep. it was launched here. Uh, I grabbed a fistful of Buckeyes for a friend, Kevin, that is currently cat sitting for us. I picked up um, a notebook that says stuff we stole from the dungeon and it's just a, an empty notebook but he plays role-playing games so i thought that would be a really nice little gift for him i picked up two games from haba mini, mini games this is animal pawn animal and this is fang mich which is a cat um and mouse catching game it's very 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 cute a kind of a classic german game a lot of kids play this growing up and i thought it was really pretty and cute so i grabbed it and uh, derek and i are big fans of hanabi and they released an expansion and this particular little tiny box expands both the Hanabi Deluxe and the card game set so we grabbed that. I only grabbed one pin this year from the Pin Bazaar. It's like a little 25 cent slot machine uh, arcade game pin which I like. Uh, Derek's favorite character from Star Wars. I got him as a Christmas ornament and then uh, <laughs> we grabbed a couple of uh, rings. One of them I have to fix. Um, I got a couple of little rings from a booth called Kaplau. They're both at Gen Con and Origins usually. Really like those. Derek got a Dungeons and Dragons Mountain Dew t-shirt. Uh, and then lastly, well second lastly I guess, is the dino, uh, the little dino purse that I picked up because it's so freaking cute. It was only 30 bucks ish. Uh, in the vendor hall. That was great. And then we did what everybody else did and got the $20 um, backpack board game carrying bag for $20. And that is it. That's This is our haul for Origins 2019. And we're going to have to try and figure out how much of this actually will fit in our luggage and how we get it home. Stay tuned for that.